Hello and welcome to another review of Drones Visual. I want to apologize for being away for some time. As perhaps many of you know, I do these reviews in my spare time, so I can't always upload videos regularly as I would have wished. I'm currently working on my review of the Winston M5 and you can imagine why this review is delayed. A few, all, uh, I have also a few other cool products that I think you might be interested in, so uh, stay tuned for more videos. Today, more than a review, I'll be introducing a new product from ISDT. Many of you may be familiar with this company, they manufacture a variety of smart charging solutions and usually their quality and functionality is quite good. You may be familiar with the ISDT Q6, the SC608, the 620, the D2 among others. Well, what I have over here today is one of their latest creations and I'm very excited to show it to you. I will also be showing you the new charge on LiPo batteries that support uh, BATGO technology. These batteries were developed in collaboration with ISDT, so this might be interesting to some of you. So okay, as you can see, the product I'm referring to is the ISDT T8 Smart Balance Charger. Let's start by uh, taking a look at what we get inside the box. Inside the box, we will get the instructions manual, which is very, and I mean very basic. Then we also find some uh, stickers that will probably, uh, I'm probably not gonna be using them because there's not really a space, space on the unit to place them, but I guess you could uh, use them somewhere else if you want. Um, then uh, under, we have a screen protector for the LCD display. Well, it's, it's much more than a screen protector. It actually protects the whole sort of upper section of the balance charger from scratches. And finally, we have the Smart Balance Charger ISDT T8. The unit, as you can see, has a very simple design, a rather round shape that becomes wider by the center of the unit. Let me show you real quick approximately how big the unit is. Here in the front section, it is around 97 millimeters. I mean, this is not the best way to measure this, but I think it will give you a fair idea about its dimensions. Then, as I was saying, the center of the unit is a little bit wider, uh, around 100 millimeters. Then finally, the length of the unit is close to 120 millimeters. The weight of the T8, as we can see here, is approximately 304 grams. If we take a look at the balance charger laterally, we can see that it sort of grows in width as we approach the rear section of the unit, and that is because the fan is located in that section. Here on the top, we can see a 2.4 inches IPS LCD display with a resolution of 320 by 240. Right under we have a very simple control unit that will allow us to navigate through all the options and select different tasks to perform. I will show you how it works a little bit later in the video. Just like I mentioned before, on the rear section of the unit we have a cooling fan and uh, this fan is not always active. Uh, you will see later when it becomes active and it sort of sucks air uh, from the front section of the unit. To prevent sliding during operation, the T8 has four rubbery anti-sliding pads that are indeed a simple thing, but yet a nice touch. Then on the left side of the unit, we will see an input port, which is where you will connect uh, the battery or the source of DC power that will power the unit. Right next to it, there's a so-called update port, and uh, later in other videos, I will provide you with some more info regarding this port. Then finally, we have a USB port that will allow you to charge your smartphone device or any other USB device. And I will show you something interesting about that USB port uh, later when I test it with my smartphone. Taking a look at the right side of the unit, we will see an XC60 output port and also a balance port. Basically here, on the right side, you will connect the batteries that you will need to charge or discharge. As you can see, the unit supports batteries of up to 8 cells, which is great considering the size of the unit. Before we go any further, let's cover the official specs of this unit. So according to the product page, the input voltage of the unit can range from 10 to 40 volts, although as uh, you can see here, it says on the unit itself that it can take from 12 to 40 uh, volts. Now I will show you later what happens when the input voltage is lower than the minimum input, input voltage in the settings of the unit itself, which is actually 11.6 volts, you will see that later. The max current according to the specs is 35 amps, as you can see here. When it comes to, uh, to the output, ISED claims that the max output voltage is 37 volts and the max output current can be up to 30 amps. The total output power of the unit is 1000 watt, although I guess to reach that you will need to hook it up to some decent power supply, but I think most of you won't need that much. Still, it's worth praising the size power ratio of this unit. It is much smaller, for example, than the Charson Antimatter Balance Charger uh, or other balance chargers available nowadays. Although with this one, you can only go up to 8 cells, while with the other ones, you can perhaps go up to 10 cells or something like that. 
Now, one important thing that I would like to mention is that uh, this uh, balance charger supports PathGo technology. So if you have uh, one of these so-called smart batteries, well, at least I call them so, uh, with an XT60i connector and uh, with PathGo technology support, then you can get some extra info once you plug them into the balance charger. And I will show you that later in the video. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with these batteries, let me show you here real quick. This is the so-called XT60i connector, and as you can see, it has an extra wire. This wire can provide the balance charger or battery cell monitoring device with some extra information about the battery. Later, we will see what information I'm referring to. But let's start by powering the unit with a regular battery. As soon as we connect the battery, we will hear that the fan kicks in, and then the LCD screen and the unit itself power on as well. Here on the initial screen, you will see a list of cells of the battery you intend to charge or discharge, which will be connected to the output port. So let me be clear, you're not seeing the cell count of the battery I have just connected, you will only see the cell count of the battery in the output port. I mean, there's not even a balance uh, port in the input side of the unit. Anyways, you will see what I'm talking about uh, later when I connect the other battery to be charged. As I mentioned before, the control buttons on there will help you navigate through different screens, options. Let's take a quick look at what screens or options uh, we have. I hope you can see the screen well, perhaps a little bit too bright, but I still hope you can see it. I want to start by taking a look at the general settings of the unit. Here in the control sort of uh, unit, if we press the center button here for a few seconds, then we'll be able to access the general settings of the unit itself. Here, for example, we can select several languages. Uh, we have, for example, English, German, uh, French, Spanish, Japanese, and both simplified and traditional Chinese. Then we have an option that seems to uh, allow us to um, share or transfer the firmware from one device to another. I'm not quite sure at this point how this works, but I will update later if I find out. Then we have system information, which provides some info about the current firmware and potentially the hardware as well. System self-checking, that uh, checks whether there are any issues with the unit, although I think the unit always does this automatically when you power it on. The volume of the beeping sound, this basically regulates how loud the noise is once you press a, a certain key or an option is selected or something like that. Then the tone of the sounds uh, may refer to uh, sort of the sound the battery or the unit sorry does when the battery is fully charged and so on and so on and so on. I mean, you, you know, those beeping sounds. And next, uh, we have the strength of the backlight. And here we can select three options, low, middle or high. The max input power, here we can enter basically this option and select different values uh, other than the default. Then the same with the next value, uh, the minimum input voltage. Although, let me tell you, as I was mentioning before, you can't go any lower than 11.6 and that's it, basically. So you can go high, but you cannot go below 11.6. So once you connect something that is uh, below 11.6, well, I'll show you in a bit what happens. Okay, if we press down from the initial screen, we'll see some information about the battery currently connected and powering the system and some other extra info. This info includes from top to bottom battery voltage. In this case, I have connected a forest battery. We can see the internal temperature of the T8 balance charger, which is currently 32 degrees. Then we get a power uh, over time unit value here. And then the last two uh, values that indicate pieces, I'm not quite sure at this point uh, what they actually are because the instructions manual basically uh, has no information about any of those screen values. But if I find out, I'll definitely place a note in the description of the video, so keep an eye on that. If we move to the screen on the left, we can select uh, battery type, for example, depending on what battery we want to connect to the output port. And let's take a look here at what kind of batteries or the chemistry of the batteries that we can select. Uh, by default, we uh, LiPo is selected, and I think most of you are gonna be using LiPo, but you can also select lithium ion, lithium metal, lead, and nickel cadmium uh, hydrate. Then in the second option, we can select the voltage per cell in case you want to change that. But I will recommend you leave it at the recommended value indicated by the thumbs up icon here on the screen, which is 4.2 volts. In the next choice, 
you uh, can change the cell count of the battery you're connected. I think the only time you need to do this is in case uh, you connect a battery and you do not want to connect by some reason the balance uh, connector uh, of your battery. So then the unit has basically no way of knowing how many cells uh, are in your battery. When the balance connector is connected, the smart balance charger will override whatever value you have selected if it does not match the battery's uh, value. I will show you that a little bit later as well. Uh, then of course the max cell uh, count that you can select for this unit is 8 uh, cells. In the next option we can select the max output current that as we saw before can go up to 30 amps. In the option here labeled task you can select whether you would like to charge, discharge or store your battery. Quick charge or other options that we may see in some other balance chargers are not available. Let's go ahead and connect another battery here in the output plug. I will connect both the XC60 connector and also the balance uh, connector. As soon as I connect the balance connector, you will see that we immediately get information about the cells of the battery I just connected. To start the charging process is very simple. You go to the right screen, then locate the button that says start, and once you do it, the charging process will automatically start with the settings you have selected or the settings that the unit has automatically selected based on the reading it got from the battery. On the right side, uh, sorry, on the left side of the display, you will see relevant information like uh, current, type of battery, charge rate, time, etc. Some useful information there. Now, as I was saying before, this is a smart balance charger, so it will compensate for most mistakes you may make. For example, if you have forgotten to connect the balance port of your battery and you attempt to charge or discharge your battery, it will warn you before proceeding. But just keep in mind that if the balance plug is not connected, well, you will need to indicate the cell count by yourself. If you uh, select, for example, the wrong battery chemistry, like for example, if you select uh, lithium metal instead of LiPo, uh, and you attempt to, for example, charge a LiPo battery, the T8 will uh, let you know that the chemistry you have selected is wrong and hence the charging uh, process can't be initiated. Although, I mean, uh, you can also find these features in other balance chargers. It's not something unique to the T8, but it's still worth mentioning. Also, if the balance uh, plug is not connected and you, by some reason, select the wrong cell count, um, sorry, I mean if the balance plug is connected, the balance connector is connected and you select the wrong cell count, just like I was telling you before, the T8 will automatically uh, override your value and correct it for the correct value as it's getting uh, this information via the balance connector. So it does not really need your info. It, it will just basically override your value and have the correct value uh, once the charging process starts, as you can see here. Now, if you're using a power source which has a voltage lower than the minimum input voltage in the settings of the unit, uh, the charging process will stop and you will get a warning message telling you that the input voltage is lower than 11.6, which as we saw before, is the minimum input voltage in the settings of the unit. If the voltage is even lower, the unit won't even be able to perform the so-called self-check that allows it to operate. That is why you should basically use power sources from 12 to 40 volts. As I was saying before, the fan of the unit is not always active. It only becomes active when the unit reaches a certain temperature, which most likely will happen during discharge. I mean, when you are discharging the battery connected to the output port, the unit needs to convert all that energy into heat, so the internal temperature will rise considerably. While I was testing it, the fan only kicked in when the temperature of the system surpassed 60 degrees Celsius. After the fan kicks in, then the temperature of the system decreases rapidly, and then after some time, the, stop, the, sorry, the fan will also uh, will stop, and it will remain like that until the temperature again reaches uh, 60 degrees or above. Even though when the system has reached uh, 60 degrees Celsius, the unit itself does not feel uh, hot at all. I mean, it is warm, but not hot. The USB port in the unit can be used to charge your mobile device. The output of this port is 2.1 amps at uh, 5 volts. The interesting thing is that when I connected my smartphone, which supports Qu uh, Qualcomm Quick Charge, I can see that it shows a Quick Charge logo here at the top. So I wonder whether this can be considered a Quick Charge uh, port. Interesting. Now let's see what happens when uh, we connect a smart battery. Uh, with an XT60i connector. Remember, this connector has a third wire. This battery supports PADCO technology, so um, we should get some benefits from this. 
when we connect uh, the bad go battery, if I may call it that, the unit will power uh, normally, but after some uh, seconds we'll hear a short beep, and then on the left corner of the screen we will see the bad go logo telling us that this battery supports bad go technology. If we move to the screen uh, on the right, all the options will sort of remain the same, but here at the bottom we can now select the input per cell and we're given two options 3.3 and uh, 3.8 also we'll be able to see some uh, more information about the badgo battery just uh, such as the brand name date of production type of battery cell count capacity max discharge uh, rate in C units, max charge rate in C units as well, uh, battery circulation. I'm not quite sure whether this refers to the number of times uh, the battery has been charged or used, you know, I'll need to find out. Then uh, battery overcharging and over discharging, mm, which should refer probably to the number of times that the battery has been charged or discharged. Duh. And then uh, the icon that looks like a light bulb is called, according to the diagram, uh, that I've seen is called over temperature, which could potentially mean how many times the battery has exceeded its critical temperature threshold or something like that. But it's strange because this battery is new, so I don't know why it has uh, one there. But anyways, so basically we get tons of new info that we don't get with a regular battery. So, okay, I think I will stop this introduction now. Has uh, It turned out to be a little bit longer than I expected. Uh, this always happens to me, you know, can't do short videos. I hope this first video has helped you guys get a better understanding of what you uh, may expect from this uh, smart balance charger. I think it's certainly a good addition to the ISDT collection and I see myself using it. Uh, the current price of the unit is around 99 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, I have placed a link in the description of the video as usually so you can get more info about it also in case i have perhaps skipped some critical info you can go and take a look at the product page please if you enjoy the video give me thumbs up and drop me some comments i definitely appreciate that and i'll definitely answer the comments if you have any questions or feel that i have said anything silly that requires correction do not hesitate and drop me some comments and i will get back to you and in that way we'll also benefit you know um, if you're interested then in the topic of drones and uh, this kind of technology and you have not subscribed to my channel please go ahead and do that now and uh, I hope uh, I can continue doing these detailed reviews for you and hope to see you all in my next video.